What's up guys and welcome back to Deck Tech for Decks and Happy Halloween and today for Halloween I'm going to give you an on theme top 5 list. We're going to go over the top 5 reanimator list. Now notably I have built a lot of these so if you guys are looking for some inspiration I'll leave the deck list linked in the description down below but let's shout out those patrons and get right into it. Irrelevant you rock if you guys want to help out the channel and get a free $15 you can click on that whatnot link in the description down below. Helps me out and you guys get free money. Additionally you guys can like comment and subscribe if you are enjoying these top five lists. Let's kick it off with number five with Nethroy Apex of Death. This guy has some really weird interactions. Whenever he mutates, he's going to allow us to reanimate creatures up to 10 power from our graveyard and we can choose multiple creatures for that ability, right? So as long as we have a lot of power one creatures, we can reanimate up to 10 creatures. He has some really weird interactions with stuff like Scourge of the Skyclave. This says, hey, negative 20 power. Now, my brain says, okay, that probably doesn't really interact with Nethroy at all. It's just going to count as zero. You get a free, you know, reanimation, then the Skyclave dies instantly. That's not what happens at all. This is actually going to add to his ability for some reason, and it's going to allow you to reanimate a total of 30 power from the graveyard. I'm not a rules lawyer, don't exactly know why it works, but it does work. So I didn't go that route, but you definitely could, and you can get some weird shenanigans off that way. What I did with this deck is I kind of filled it with a bunch of Hydras. The new Polkronos had just come out a couple sets ago, and I was like, how can we abuse this guy? We need to get as many Hydras dying as possible, and Nethroy's kind of perfect for that, because whenever you reanimate a bunch of zero-costed Hydras, they just die instantly due to having no power. This is going to set off Polkronos a ton. And then I just chucked the deck full of die triggers, like Pitiless Plunderer, Sir Conrad, and honestly, I thought it was going to be like a meme deck, but it ended up being super powerful, and that's why Nethroy makes this list. This guy is just disgusting, and the deck has outperformed my expectations. Or expectations. Expectations, what's wrong with me? Moving on to number four, we have Mudratha. This is another one of my favorite commanders, and honestly, you can build her any way you want. She's just super flexible. She does also have some cool interactions. If we have some multiple typing creatures like Haywire Might, it's an artifact and a creature. So whenever we cast it using Mudratha, we get to choose which one it's being there. So you can kind of reanimate more than one creature or more than one type this way when you're using cards with multiple typings. Additionally, cards like Haywire Might are just amazing for Mudratha. We're talking about repeatable removal. If Mudratha sticks on the battlefield, you will outvalue your opponent and slowly just drain them. Them down. Mudratha also gets to abuse some really broken cards and make them even more broken. Like Mystic Remora, this draws you a ton of cards and it's honestly worse than a Ristic Study. But whenever we're playing Mudratha, this is just going to keep coming back and back and back. Same with Planeswalkers. If you're playing Planeswalkers, you can just cast it, and if they get rid of it, it ends up in your graveyard, ready for you to cast again. This deck is just really resilient when she's on the battlefield. Another thing that's really cool is we get to use cards like Lord of the Forsaken. This isn't a really good card. Everybody thought it was going to be really good, and then it's just not, because you don't cast a lot of cards directly from your graveyard. But with Mudratha, you're casting a ton of cards for your graveyard, so this guy's going to be perfect here. A Additionally, all of your cards like Great Break Limea that just throw something directly into the graveyard is super powerful here. All of your Entomb effects are now just straight up tutors and that's broken in itself. I took this deck in a um, kind of a secret commander strategy. I did the Scarab God. I love the Scarab God and I just wanted it to have green. That way we can have access to Seedborn Muse effects. Now we're untapping all of our lands. We get to activate his ability a ton and it's also super consistent against because the tutors just or all of your entomb effects are tutors straight to your hand so it's easy to get scarab god and start doing the zombie thing coming in at number three we have disa this is a new jund commander that's really broken if taken in the reanimator strategy route first of all she makes massive tokens and she incentivizes us to hit all three of our opponents every single turn so including stuff like grim hireling and professional facebreaker are already great options in this deck and they're powerful cards in their own so whenever you have a commander that rewards you from playing powerful cards, it's just going to make the commander better. 
Makes sense, right? Another thing that's really bo broken about her is whenever a Termogoyf just enters the graveyard from your library, whether you mill it, entomb it, any way it gets there, as long as it went from your library to the graveyard, you just go ahead and reanimate it. The real broken part is whenever we shove Ashes of the Fallen, Maskwood Nexus, or Conspiracy in this deck, because now all of our creatures are those Goyf creatures. Now, anytime we mill any creature, it's just going to get reanimated. And I don't think I have to tell you why that's broken, right? You can get three card combos off whenever you entombs, or sorry, buried alive something, just three cards that combo with each other and you've won the game. So you can really take this girl to a very high power level and then just on her face, she's really strong as well. Those Termogoyf creatures being massive is no joke because we can include stuff like Greater Good to sacrifice them to draw even more cards and put even more cards in our graveyard. So we're really efficient at filling our graveyard here, utilizing those giant Termogoyf creatures and then again the bigger our graveyard gets the bigger those Termogoyf creatures are going to get as well. Moving on to number two we have probably one of the most consistent reanimator decks I've ever played with Rafine. What makes this guy so powerful is we're able to use cards that are low to the ground like Adeline that generate a massive board state very quickly and then we're able to connive a ton. What this means is we're drawing cards and discarding cards equal to the amount of attacking creatures we have which is a ton. Now, this is also very powerful because we're actually able to discard all of our reanimation targets while drawing into our reanimation spells. So now we can discard something like a Toxrail and then reanimate it for one mana. That's just not okay, and this deck does that very consistently. You end up with some massive creatures in your hand, something that's evasive that can attack very early, and then it's just going to benefit you. You're going to get card advantage, and then even if you're not drawing into those reanimation spells, you just keep discarding your dead cards because sometimes that's the problem with these reanimator strategies. You end up with your reanimator targets in your hand and Rafine just doesn't have that problem and draws a ton of cards while being in a very powerful color pairing that is Esper. You get control options, you get to choose what you're discarding, you don't have to discard any of your counter magic. Again, this guy's just super consistent and does what he does very efficiently. Moving on to number one, we have Sauron the Dark Lord, just because of how disgusting this guy is. He's got a lot of words on him, so let's break it down. First of all, this guy's six mana, but don't scoff at that. You know, we are in Grixis, that can be pretty easily obtained as soon as turn four. Additionally, this guy basically has Hexproof. I don't know why they bothered with all of these words with the ward ability. Might as well just give this guy Hexproof and call it a day. Additionally, we do get the ability to amass whenever someone casts a spell. So he's kind of like a Mana Gorger Hydra on a body. You just get the added benefit of that. So we get to abuse some power matter cards like the Reaver Cleaver to generate an insane amount of mana when this guy gets big. We can also use cards like Altar of the Wretched to draw a ton of cards just by sacrificing the Orc Army. Again, very useful here. Even Ruthless Technomancer is going to see play just to sacrifice that army that gets massive very quickly. And then if that wasn't enough words, he also has the ability to discard your hand and draw four cards whenever the ring tempts you. And whenever the army deals combat damage, you guessed it, the ring tempts you. So he enables himself to rifle through your entire deck. Then whenever we pair this with the nine Nazgul, it gives us nine cards that can very consistently cause the ring to tempt us and rifle us through our graveyard or our entire library, right? We're filling our graveyard, we're drawing cards from our library. We can also pair this with cards that allow us to draw double cards. So now instead of drawing four cards, we're drawing eight cards and discarding even more cards into our graveyard. Pair this with Underworld Breach, a sack outlet, some cost reducers, and you can cast your entire deck. And then if you never get to that point, you're just casting some massive Nine Nazgul's that are beating everybody in the face. So again, pretty busted strategy, especially when you compare it with stuff like Archfiend of Ifnir that is constantly wiping your opponent's board. And then additionally, you have... Um, Bone Miser that's giving you mana and drawing you additional cards whenever you're discarding cards as well. So whenever you pair this with the consistency of the Nine Nazgul strategy, I mean nine cards that give you the ability to for the ring to tempt you, pretty busted, especially when you're sacrificing them and then reanimating them. And then you pair it with the power of the commander, all of the words on it. It just ends up being pretty hard to overcome and it can be one of those arch enemy decks. But with that being said, that's going to end the video. Let me know your top five favorite reanimator comments in the comments down below, or sorry, favorite reanimator commanders in the comments down below. 
mind a little boggled trying to get this video out because we are going trigger treating, right? Let me know what you guys are for Halloween. As always, I hope this helped you in your deck building endeavors. Now I'll see you guys in the next one. As always, let's thank those patrons, Irrelevant, Praetor, Chicken Salad, The Professional, Excessum. I really appreciate you guys and everything you do. Hope everybody has a nice Halloween.